11th meeting of the Falmouth Conservation Commission. This meeting is being held virtually via Zoom video conference. Please be patient. We'll do our best to be efficient and allow everyone to participate. This meeting is also being broadcast and streamed online by FCTV in real time. As this meeting is being recorded by Zoom and broadcast by FCTV, please be aware of what you say, how you say it, what can be seen and heard in your background. The chair recognizes the attendance of our staff members, Jen, Kevin, Alyssa, Amy, our uh, Mark, our recording secretary, Susan, and our illustrious selectman, Sam Patterson. Uh, we have full attendance, save for Mark Gurney. So for the record, the appointed alternate for tonight's meeting will be Pat. I'll remind the commissioners for commenting. I'll call on each of you at the appropriate time so we don't speak over each other. Um, i remind you all the votes have to be done by roll call. To our public participants, there will be an opportunity for public comment for each hearing. If you'd like to comment on a particular hearing, you may submit any comments or questions via the chat function once that hearing has opened. At the appropriate time, I'll call for public comments and any submissions will be read into the record. The link and further instructions are posted on the agenda. First up, vote minutes, September 30. Um, Mr. Chair, I've read the minutes and find them in order that they be adopted. Okay. Second. Second. All right. We have a motion on a second to accept as submitted. Betsy. Uh, I wasn't here, so I'm going to abstain. That's right. I'm sorry. Courtney. Bird, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin. O'Brien, aye. Maury. I abstain. I wasn't you there. Here. Oh, sorry. Pat. Harris, aye. Peter. Walsh, aye. And Steve. Pat and I. Okay, it is unanimous. They are accepted. Next up are requests for continuance under a notice of intent. First item is Stephen Ballas, 64 Muskegon Road, East Falmouth, Mass, for permission to install a 4 by 25 float adjacent to an existing licensed concrete bulkhead and to replace the existing timber access stairs. Jen? Yes, Mr. Chairman, the applicant is requesting a continuance until October 28th. So moved. Gladfelder. Carlo Hawk, second. All right, we have a motion and a second to continue this hearing until 1028. Betsy. Gladfelder, aye. Courtney. <clears throat> Bird, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin. O'Brien, aye. Maury. Carlo Hawks, aye. Pat. Harris, aye. Peter. Walsh, aye. Steve. Pat and I. It is unanimous. This hearing is continued until October 28th. Next request for continuance, Michael Katadorian, 50 Muskegon Road, East Falmouth, Mass. For permission to install a float adjacent to an existing licensed concrete bucket. Jen? Yes, Mr. Chairman, the applicant's re requesting a continuance until October 28th. Mm -hmm. Gladfelter, second. Okay, we have a motion of second to continue this hearing until 1028. Betsy. Gladfelter, aye. Courtney. Bird, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin. O'Brien, aye. Maury. Carlo Hawks, aye. Pat. Harris, aye. Peter. Walsh, aye. Steve. Pat, aye. It is unanimous. This hearing is. Continued until 10:28. Peter, you you cut out. I don't know if we lost you. Peter's frozen. All right. Um, next up, our request for determination of applicability, and I'll remind participants if you want to hear is a negative determination. That means you can proceed with your project and you don't need to go to the level of a notice of intent. First up, 
Mary Swope, 90 Church Street, Woods Hole, Mass, for permission of Vista Prune, according to FWR 10.18, 10B. Kevin? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Staff recommends a negative two under the state and a negative three under the bylaw. Resource area boundaries are not confirmed. Bird, so move. Carla Hawk, second. Excellent. We have a motion and a second to accept staff's recommendation. Betsy. Gladfelder, aye. Courtney. Heard, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin. O'Brien, aye. Maury. Arlo Hawks, aye. Pat. Harris, aye. Peter, are you back with us? Doesn't look like Peter's back with us yet, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Steve. And aye. Uh, still constitutes you know, uh, acceptance. Um, can you tell me if Mark joins us? I'm looking for both Mark and Peter. Okay. All right, next up, Richard and Carol Joseph, 95 Waterside Drive, North Falmouth, Mass, for permission to raise R-A-Z-E an existing single family dwelling to construct and maintain a new single family dwelling and garage with associated utilities, landscaping appurtenances, and to upgrade to a new Title V sewage disposal system with an increase in design flow. Kevin? Mr. Chairman, that. the applicant has requested a continuance until October 21st. Okay. So moved. Glad Pelter. Carlo Hawk, second. Uh, we have a motion and a second to uh, continue this RDA until 1021. Betsy. Uh, Glad Pelter, I. We just lost Courtney, too. Yeah, and oh. I'm on the phone with one of the consultants that doesn't have power. Um, There's a fire on the power line out in front of our house right now. One? You get all the fun. Transformer? Branch on it, yeah, probably. Do you have a fire station on your side of town? Hey, hey, it's hey, close go. tonight. <laughs> All right. So we have Betsy, you said I, Matthew's I, Kevin? I. Maury? Carla Hawks, I. Pat? Harris, I. Peter, we've still lost. Peter, still not with us, Mr. Chairman. This might Steve. be a shaky night. Uh, aye. Well, so far, we, thank you, Steve. So far, we still have quorums, right? So, uh -huh. so that's unanimous. Um, the RDA has continued till 1021. Next up. For RDAs, Greg Frazier, Town of Falmouth, Great Bay Street, map 46A 15 000 000 B, and Monont Road, map 45 09 000 041 A, East Falmouth, Mass., for permission to construct and install 16 wooden dinghy racks and six rail post systems to be used on town-owned property and to remove unpermitted concrete posts, metal posts, PVC pipes, and other tie-off structures. Kevin. Yes, Mr. Chairman, staff recommends a negative two under the state and a negative three under the bylaw. Resource area boundaries are not confirmed. And Mark Kasperzik is available um, to respond to any questions that you guys may have. As well as Greg Frazier. Okay. Yeah. I'll make a motion to accept staff's recommendation. Carla Hawk, second. All right. Mark and Greg, you're going to get up easy. Anybody Welcome have any questions? I see both of them here, but no questions. Yep. <laughs> Glad this project's right. moving forward. <laughs> well, that's not Greg Frazier. Oops. All right. Betsy. Gladfelter, I. Courtney in the house. 
Courtney, I just promoted back up. Thomas, thank you. Courtney, did you hear that? Mm -hmm. All right. Matthews, I. Kevin? O'Brien, I. Maury? Carlo Hawks, I. Yeah. Harris, I. Peter? Is Peter back in? Nope. Uh, Steve. Uh, Pat and I. It's unanimous. We have accepted staff's recommendation. It's all because of your compelling argument, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, I told them to ask you questions, but they didn't. Good night, Mark. I'll see you tomorrow. All right. Thank you all. Have a great one. You Bye. too. Bye, Mark. I'll talk to you tomorrow, Mark. <laughs> yeah, I just saw it. Looks like Courtney left. It was Courtney, might have, Courtney might have been dropped again. Okay. Moving forward, request for a hearing under notice of intent. All hearings of the Falmouth Conservation Commission are held simultaneously under the authorities of the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act and the Falmouth Wetlands Bylaw. Although a single decision of the commission is issued, it represents a separate decision under each authority. First up, Thomas J. Scarduzio, trustee, zero slash 192 Meadowneck Road, assessor's map, plat number 31, parcel lot number 04005002C, East Falmouth, Mass. For permission to remove an existing driveway, to relocate an existing shed, and to construct a single family dwelling, attached garage, upper level deck, Title V septic system, and pickleball court with associated grading and landscaping. Yes, and Mr. Chairman. Oops, sorry. Nope, it's all on you. Okay, yes, Mr. Chairman, I have promoted um, Karen Healy up from the BSC group to present the project. Um, Karen, is there anybody else in your project team that you'd like me to promote up? Not at this time, no. Okay, then you may proceed. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. For the record, my name is Kieran Healy. I'm a land surveyor with the BSC group, working with Mr. Scarduzzi on the project on Meadow Neck Road. Uh, it's a vacant piece of land, and we are proposing a single family dwelling and improvements to the property. We have um, some coastal bank that we are maintaining 60 feet away from with all structures. Um, we are relocating one deck that right now is on the property line. We're just gonna relocate it onto Mr. Scarduzio's property. Um, we're proposing a septic system, which would be entirely outside of the 100 foot buffer to the coastal bank and the distance to the wetland and salt marshes further away. Um, the lot is, is tight and you know the amount of space available to build on is now. So you'll see that the building is a little bit longer and not narrower than you would normally expect, but uh, it's the only way we could meet the street setback and to also meet the 60 foot setback from the coastal bank. Uh, the coastal bank itself is fragmented. It runs closest to where the house is, and then it kind of tapers back as you go more to the north. Um, there are three trees right at the 50 foot buffer line. Um, one is a twin pine, an eight inch pine, um, and then there is a, a six inch pine and there is an eight inch oak. The, um, the six inch pine is in bad condition and um, it's you know potentially a fall hazard. The eight inch oak is right at the uh, edge of the 50 foot and the uh, twin pine is at about 47 feet away from the wetlands. Uh, we're looking to remove those three to allow the construction to go forward. Other than that, the site itself is heavily vegetated and wooded. There is no uh, disturbance on the site right now. So the only disturbance would be the area where we propose our uh, improvements to the site. Other than that, I'd be glad to answer any questions that you may have. Mr. Healy, do you have a, um, a plan to share or do you want me to share the plan for you? If you would mind sharing a plan for me, please. Mr. Chairman, do, we, do you want me to do that? Those presentations over. Yeah. I mean, okay. if anybody wants questions. Okay. 
Can anybody see that? Yes. Yes. Okay. So Jen, just, you and, and or Kevin want to go through that, through yours? Um, yes, Mr. Chairman. So we went out there, we went with the BSC group um, prior to them filing. Um, we really didn't have any questions or comments. Mitigation is not required because the zone A is completely vegetated. Um, we did ask them if the applicant wanted to have a path down to Hamlin Pond and to put that on the plan, but I don't believe that that has been decided yet. Um, and the only question we had, Mr. The uh, walkway calculations included in your, I mean, is, was the walkway included in your um, buffer zone calculations when you did those? Correct, yes. Okay, thank you. That was the only thing that was unclear to the staff. Um, other than that, Mr. Chairman, the only thing I had to say is my sister uh, would only dream of having her own pickleball court on a property. So um, that's it. We don't have any more questions. Uh, Do you want me to stop sharing, Mr. Chairman? Yes, please. I don't know if Kevin Newton has anything to add. The only thing I have is Courtney, unless he's back on, Courtney's lost power. He's going to keep trying, but he's lost power twice. So I don't know what's, things are happening in Sipawisset right now. Well, for the moment, he's not in and Peter's not in. For the in. moment, he's not here. Okay. All right. Um, irregardless, we're going to be looking for a continuance because we do not have a DEP number, just so you oh, know. Correct. Karen, you don't have a DEP number unless you've gotten one between the time we checked? No, I do not have one. So we're going to have to continue this. Um, All right, so let's go with some comments first before we get too far ahead of ourselves. Betsy. Uh, I don't have any questions. I just have a comment that this was a, a nicely laid out uh, building envelope on it. It was very easy to follow. Very straightforward. Yes, it is. Kevin O'Brien. Uh, no questions at this time. Thank you. Okay. Maury. No questions. Pat. No questions, thanks. Uh, Steve. Oh, well laid out plan, but very difficult to walk around. But yes, <laughs> I think it's a fine use of the available uh, resource areas. Thank you. Yeah, I agree. I think the way it was laid out was uh, a nice way of working it. Nice work. Um, so we don't have to continue it for any other reason than the DEP number. So therefore we're okay putting it on 1021, correct? Correct. Are you about, okay. Is that okay with you, Mr. Haley? Yes. Okay. So at the request of the applicant, I'll make a motion to continue to October 21st. Second. Glad to O'Brien. All right, we have a motion and a second to continue this for the DEP number to 1021. Betsy. Vlad Filter, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin. O'Brien, aye. Maury. Uh -oh. Maury's frozen. Maury's frozen. Uh, I'm going to come back to her. Pat. Harris, aye. Steve. Pat and I. All right. We have Maury back. Not yet. Not you, yet. You have enough Maury. to close it. All right. We've got so enough. She's for, lost her connection, so she's not with us right now. She'll be trying. Okay. So it is unanimous. The hearing is continued until 1021 for the purposes of the DEP number. Thank you, Thank sir. You, gentlemen. Thank you, members. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Given what's happened, I'm next in line. <laughs> Don't say that. Oh, no, actually, Kevin, you're next in line. I'll come. Well, given where Courtney and Maury oh. are. Oh, okay. Probably gone by you, Betsy, already. All right. 
Next up is continued hearings under notice of intent. First item, Joe Jackson, zero Bywater Court, lot 16, Falmouth, Mass, for permission to construct a single family dwelling and install mitigation plantings. Jen? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I am promoting Tom Bunker to a pan as a panelist and Teresa Sprague as panelists. Um, Tom and Teresa, is there anybody else in your project team who would like me to promote? Uh, Maury's trying to reconnect. I think that Tom, uh, Tom Teresa. And Teresa and I are all. Is there anybody else in your project team, Tom and Teresa, that you'd like me to promote up? I don't think so. Okay, excellent. Thank you. One second, Tom, please. Uh, Jen, did you say somebody else came back in? Maury's trying to reconnect. I don't see Courtney. Okay, thank you. Sorry about that, Tom. It's all on you, sir. All on me. Uh, if the power lasts, yeah. I will uh, share my screen. For a moment. I have up, well, here's the uh, the title block for lot 16 Bywater Court. Uh, the plan dated September 4th with a revision of September 30th, 2020, where the only revision was that we made anyway was to reduce the size of the house. Um, as you recall, this house was uh, 16 feet by 51 feet was touching the ground. Uh, and that put uh, two corners of it. I don't have any color on this plan, but two corners of it down where my, my hand is waving around there of the uh, ground contact area was in the zone A and up at the, say, the northwest corner of the ground top contact area was in the zone A. It was a total of five square feet or something like that. Um, that, that area was 16 feet wide. So we reduced that um, foundation ground floor area to 15 feet wide. There's no longer any contact within the zone A. And uh, we reduced overall the house used to be 26 feet wide it had a 10 foot overhang uh, so we reduced the overhang by one foot a nine foot overhang so now the total width of the house is 24 feet rather than 26 feet um, so two feet came off we reduced the total coverage um, by 102 square feet on the entire lot the edge of the lawn and the edge of the mitigation planting remain the same. Before this was labeled as a four foot wide uh, proposed lawn beyond the deck. And now it's six foot wide proposed lawn beyond the deck. Um, still, we're not going for the 10 feet, but this is uh, still enough to get the uh, uh, enough for maintenance around it, uh, particularly because it has such a so much of it is deck that certainly there's uh, enough enough area to to get up and maintain do any uh, work on the house um, that was uh, that was the change on my part the the uh, coverage calculations came out somewhat lower 3200 square feet required um, then the proposed calculation proposed mitigation uh, was still the same although I know in your Staff report, there was some question about it. Um, I think I will, uh, since you've gone over my change, I will stop my share and then see what uh, Teresa wants to put up and explain uh, about the mitigation planting. Thank you, John. Hi. Hello, Teresa. Hi, hi, Teresa Sprague, Blue Flats Design. Um, we're just starting to get hit with that storm right now. So if you like see me like twirling up in a tornado, it, which it sounds like my, little shed office is about to take off any minute. Um, but I'm gonna share the screen with you briefly, if that's okay. Please. And- Race back um, on. 
Okay, so um, the changes, as Tom pointed out, um, the changes mainly are to the house, although I will point out a couple of changes to our plan. Um, you can see the revised um, plan notes September 30th, 2020. We've increased the amount of shrub planting. So the area will be planted with canopy sized native trees. Um, we've got seven trees, including um, Tupelo, Pitch Pine and um, Swamp White Oak that we're proposing to plant um, in order to get the one tree for every 1000 square feet of mitigation requirement. Um, and in addition to that, we increased the amount of shrub planting. So we increased the density on the shrubs. Um, and we've now proposing um, 358 native shrubs. The, ink, the size, as Tom pointed out, of the mitigation area has remained the same. However, um, in going back and remeasuring after the confusion between the 7,513 and our 7,315, I realized that when the measurement was done um, that came up with the 7,315 square feet, that um, the person in my office who did the measurement counted this area um, outside of the area shaded in green around the canopy, um, under the canopy of the oak and the pitch pine. So um, not wanting to you know, unfairly um, say that we're planting out an area or not because that's in the canopy, the actual number of the area shown in green on our plan is 7,043 square feet. So Tom will have to um, update his plan to make sure that it matches, but that measurement is accurate. Um, so with that, that has been the only change to the proposed plan. We've increased the amount of planting. We have not decreased the square footage of the mitigation area. There is a little bit more um, of a grassy area because the size of the deck over at Peng has been reduced, uh, but otherwise all else um, remains the same with the exception that now all of the structure touching the ground is outside of the A zone. And I'll stop sharing unless there's any questions about the plan. All right, Jenny and or Kevin. Yes, Mr. Chairman, just so you know, more, both Maury and Courtney are back on. Um, thank you for clearing up the confusion about the planting square footage. We had three numbers we were going off of and we just wanted to make sure we, we knew what we were talking about. Okay, thank you for putting um, the additional shrubs to just try to um, fill that area in a little bit more. Um, so I appreciate that. Unfortunately, the staff is still gonna have to go back to our original comments as, um, in regards to the regulations and just reiterate that this um, project doesn't meet some of the performance standards listed um, in your regulations. Um, so therefore um, the staff can't su support the project. Um, unfortunately, it's not, um, it's, in, still encroaching into that zone A of uh, land under water bodies and not providing that um, separation from the limit of work. Um, was there a revised um, riverfronts analysis that went that was submitted or not? No, no, there wasn't. Um, frankly, you know, as I think I said in the the first one, and I, you know, probably I can put my head together with Teresa's and, and do something. I neglected that part, but still would say in, in the uh, riverfront analysis, it does say that we should explore all alternatives that have less negative impact. And uh, part of our uh, thinking on this is that I think there is no alternative that has less negative impact. There are a couple alternatives that have more positive impact, um, but I mean, that, <clears throat> that, that's where we had ended it the la last time um, on the riverfront analysis, because we just felt that this uh, has only positive impact, not negative impact. And so we thought we didn't have to go farther. And again, just to remind the board under the Riverfront Act, um, they are allowed to, to construct a single family home if the lot was created from, from 96 if the lot can be developed for purposes under the applicable provisions of municipal and state law. So again, the staff stance is that um, it just does not meet your regulations. There's no doubt that the plan 
does offer an improvement to that area. That's that's not in question at all. It was a very well developed plan. Unfortunately, staff has no choice but to to you know remind the board it doesn't meet the regulations. I don't have anything else. Kevin Newton, anything to add? No, no, nothing to add to that. Thank you. That's T. You call on me, Jamie. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I don't need any more information. Thank you. Okay. Courtney? Uh, I have no comments because I missed half of the presentation. Evan? No comments. Maury? I'm not Maury's, on the quorum. Maury's not on the quorum. No, I'm Thanks, sorry. Maury. Pat? No comments. Peter, are you back in the house? Yes, I had a power outage and I'm working on my generator. Uh, no uh, comments. Okay. Steve? No comments. All right. So may, may I make a motion, Jamie? Yes, please. I'll make a motion to close the hearing and take it under advisement. Pat and second. Thank you. So we have a motion and a second to close the hearing. Betsy. Bob Felder, aye. Courtney. Uh, Bird, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin. O'Brien, aye. Maury's not on the quorum. Pat? Harris, aye. Peter? Walsh, aye. Steve? Pat, no. aye. Okay, and I'm sorry I neglected. Do we have uh, any public chat comments? No public chat comments at this time, Mr. Chairman. All right. <clears throat> Mr. It Chairman. Is unanimous. This uh, may I make an observation. Uh, for the purposes of the quorum on this, uh, I probably shouldn't be on it because I missed 95% tonight's presentation. So I, I don't know what was, really don't know what was said. So I, I think it's best that I not be on the quorum. Likewise for me, I, I, I missed a substantial amount. Okay, hang on. Gentlemen, I'll cross you off. Unless we can do it again. For this, for this, oh. Betsy. Pardon me? Who's going to be the quorum for this project, just so we can clarify it? Kevin, Betsy, Jamie, Steve, and Pat. Okay. All right. And those four voted. I voted for to close the hearing ticket under advisement. So in that regard, it is unanimous. The hearing is closed. Thank you, Mr. Bunker. Thank you, Ms. Spade. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Teresa, get in your house before you blow away. I know, yeah, I'm gonna run for it now. No, <laughs> Good night. All right, let's try to be clear on the next one, make sure whoever's in or not well we never know it all has to do with the weather <laughs> yeah i'd like to know that before we take the vote though all right the next next up is frank and patricia dundulus 18 tajmu drive he's found with mass for permission to relocate existing licensed floats quorum please Courtney, Kevin, Betsy, Jamie, uh, Steve, and Pat. Mr. Courtney, Chairman, Kevin, I'm... Jamie, Betsy, Steve. And Peter, because uh, is that right? Yeah, because Mark, Mark was here last time, and and um maury was not so peter's also 
Well, Peter's on the quorum, no matter what, he was here. Okay, so the easiest thing to say is that it's Mark and Maury are not on the quorum. Uh, correct. All right. Without further ado, go ahead, Pat. I can see you. Um, thank you for the record, uh, Matt Costa, Cape and Islands Engineering. Um, oh, hold on one second, Matt. Pat, did you have a disclaimer? No? No, no, everything's fine. It was done last okay, week. I, I, okay. Oh, you said okay. Pat. I thought you said Matt. No, that's all okay. Right. That's all right. It's all about you, Matt. Mr. Costa, whenever you're ready. Um, yes, thank you. For the record, Matt Costa, Cape and Islands Engineering. Um, we submitted a revised plan showing some um, soundings. And um, especially for Betsy, we showed a mooring field. And we also um, submitted a, um, the 1993 RDA that um, approved the float and was used for the filing in the Chapter 91 license. Um, and that shows that they were legally existing prior to 1998 uh, regulation change. Um, with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Uh, looking forward to putting this to bed. Excellent. Thank you. Matt, do you want to share uh, your screen or is it necessary, Mr. Chairman? I'm not sure it is. Okay. Did everybody get the revised plan? Yes. Okay. Um, did I see uh, Mr. Wall in the attendees? Would he like to add anything? Brian is, um, I believe, is the attorney for Baelish and Cachadorian. So we will take any of Attorney Wall's comments through the chat function, Mr. Chairman. Okay. And I don't see any at this moment. Okay. Do you and or Kevin have anything to add? Nope, I was specifically looking for the RDA that uh, legitimized the floats that was submitted as was the resides plan with soundings where the floats are, right where the floats are, the mooring field. Um, so that, that information was submitted. All right, Betsy. I just do have a comment for Matt. So the mooring fields are required on, on docks. And the other reason why I wanted it is that when you just see those floats, it looks like there's plenty of room in that canal. But when you add the mooring field onto it, you realize that it's a fairly narrow passageway. Other than that, I have no questions and I appreciate Matt did everything we had asked last time. Thank you. I, I have yet to doubt your logic, Betsy. I, I did not. I did not question your request. <laughs> My man, Courtney. Uh, I have no questions. All right, Kevin. No questions, Mr. Chairman. Okay, Pat. No questions. Peter. No questions or comments. Excellent. Steve? No questions. Okay. Jen, anything in the public chat function? Not at this time, Mr. Chairman. All I'd right. Like to make a motion to close the hearing and take it under advisement. Word second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to close the hearing. Without further comments, Betsy. Glad felt her eye. Courtney? Bird, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin? O'Brien, aye. Pat? Paris, aye. Peter? Walsh, aye. Steve? Pat and I. It is unanimous. The hearing is closed. Thank you, Mr. Costa. Thank you. Good night. Thank you, Matt. Good night. Good night. All right, the next two have been continued. Could you tell me the dates they're continued to, please? 28. Stephen Ballas, 64 Muskega is 1028. 
Thank you. Michael Cacciadorian, 50 Muskegon is 1028. Thank you. Jen, you look puzzled. No, I just thought oh, okay. of somebody and I was trying to figure out who I lost, but I have eight of you, I'm good. Okay. Next up, continued request to amend an order of resource area delineation. Wings Pond LLC 63 North Falmouth Highway, Falmouth Mass for permission to amend the ORAD and confirm that the vegetated wetland is an isolated freshwater wetland, not a bordering freshwater wetland as classified in the original ORAD. To confirm the boundary of the isolated land subject to flooding under state regulations and the Falmouth wetland regulations and to confirm the mean high water line of the certified vernal pool <clears throat> and that pool is protected under the state regulations and Falmouth wetland regulations. That was a mouthful. Mm -hmm. ben, or yes, Mr. Chairman, Mark Manganello LLC has lost power. He was gonna call in, but I did tell him that it was not necessary. I do not believe he is in our attendee list, but if you are Mark, please send me a quick uh, note in the chat function. Um, we did receive a revised plan. Mark has been working with our engineering department and um, the team for Wings Pond LLC. We have received the plan. Uh, engineering, our engineering department is in agree with it. In agreement with it, isolated land subject to flooding is based on an engineering calculation. So we were just making sure it was correct on the plan. We have received that plan. It is correct, and you can close this hearing. Unless Mark is in the chat and he is not. I did email him to let him know it was not necessary to make a motion, him. close the hearing and take it under advisement. Second, Lightfelter. Okay, does anybody want to comment on this? All right, we have a motion and a second to close this hearing. Betsy? Lightfelter, aye. Courtney? Bird, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin? O'Brien, I. Maury? Carlo Hawks, I. Pat? Harris, I. Peter? Walsh, I. Steve? Pat and I. And Jen, you said there were no chat questions, comments? No. Correct. Okay. It is unanimous. The hearing is closed. All right, we have no orders of conditions. Next up, other business, elections. I promise no new taxes. All right, so as you know, Russ has left the building pursuing other interests, so that opens up for vice chair. So I just thought it was appropriate at that this time to hold a full election. It's been a little while. Um, nothing needs to change, but you know, whatever everybody wants. So we're gonna be looking for chair, vice chair. Um, I don't know what the term is, like keeper of the records. It's the quorum, which Betsy is presently doing, does a very good job at. Um, so um, whatever discussion you wanna have, you can have, and then just, we need a motion and a second. The motion would be a nomination and then the vote. I would like to nominate Jamie Matthews as a chair again. I'll second. Bird, second. I'll nominate Courtney Bird as vice chair. Hello, Hawk, second. Who was that? Request that Elizabeth Gladfelder continue in his role as undefined by the chair. <laughs> Hello, Hawk, second. <laughs> I don't know if I like that, Steve. I don't know what that'll lead to. <laughs> Whatever he wants done. <laughs> Dump on me. Oh. All right, Thanks, back you. up one second. Steve, you nominated Courtney? I did, sir. Thank you. All right, I've written everything down. Do we want to take a blanket vote or do we need to do individual blankets? Okay. Blanket Blankets, vote. okay. Blankets, fine. All right. Okay, so the motion is for Jamie to remain chair, Courtney to be vice chair. Betsy to stay as keeper of the records. 
as I've so eloquently appointed her. So with that, we're gonna take a blanket vote. Betsy. Vlad Felter, aye. Courtney. Bird, aye. Uh, Matthews, aye. Kevin. O'Brien, aye. Mar uh, sorry, Maury. Carlo Hawks, aye. Pat. Harris, aye. Peter. Walsh, aye. Steve. Pat and I. It is unanimous as nominated. Thank you, everyone. Um, Congratulations, all. Yes. Yeah, I wish yeah. most yeah. politics could be this uncontentious. <laughs> uh, two more quick, I'm sorry, one more quick thing. So um, the Coastal Resiliency Action Committee, um, we were appointed for a three-year term. We've been extended to the end of October. Um, the reason I'm bringing this up is that that committee was was started to create ideas and 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 plans, if you will, for what we would do for you know sea level rise, coastal storms, that kind of stuff. And we are getting ready to put together our recommendation to submit to the board of selectmen. One of our recommendations is that that some iteration of that uh, committee uh, go forward with creating action items. So I ex I'm guessing, Jen, you can correct me if I'm wrong, that that's probably gonna happen like the first of the year. Um, I, I guess it could happen a little earlier, but um, so within that committee, we, we have a, um, I've been the representative from conservation for the last three years. And um, Paul Dreyer was the, the rep from planning. And we wanna keep two reps in that status. So I'm looking for someone that would want to um, to do that for the next iteration. I would guess that it's still going to be three years. We were meeting twice a month. Um, it's actually pretty interesting. Um, before I close it out, Jen, you want to say something? Yeah, Jamie, I just want to say I think it's a little bit premature to to ask somebody to to volunteer for that. I'm I'm not quite sure what the Board of Selectmen is going to do, but I think people should start thinking about it if a representative from the CONCOM is required to be on that committee. It is a really interesting committee, and I think um, at this time the Board should just um, give it some so thought and see if they'd like to, if and when the time comes, if, uh, if they'd like to um, be part of that group. Okay, can, I that's all? can I ask a question, yeah. Jamie? Are you yes. saying you're stepping aside on this? Is that what you're yeah. saying? Okay. Yes. For that piece, yes. I, and I also think that it'd be good to have somebody else, some new blood in the in the on the committee. And even if the the selectmen don't want, don't require a, a somebody from conservation being on it, I still don't think it would be a bad idea. I think that perspective it goes both ways, you know. I think. It's so I would ask. In fact, I think it's quite logical. That somebody from the commission be on it. Yeah, and I can't imagine they'll change that. Um, but I just wanted to throw it out there so you guys could think about it, um, consider it, um, and we'll keep you posted on how that's gonna work out, you know, when it, if and when. Mm -hmm. But again, as a committee, we're recommending that because it's, it's silly to keep doing all this research and not acting on it, or at least preparing to act when the time is appropriate. So, Correct. Keep that in mind. All right, next up in, in other business is revision of fall holiday schedule. Yes, last time we voted, um, we voted to meet, no, to not meet on November 18th and November 25th. I don't have my calendar right in front of me, guys. Yes. Um, we do have to revise that. Um, the 18th needs to be moved to the 11th because the 11th is Veterans Day and Town Hall is not open that day. So um, I'm not worried about town meeting, Courtney. We did check that. Um, Adriana was correct. There's only a, a very few articles. It should be handled in one night, one and a half nights, if that. Um, so I have no problem meeting on the 18th, but we will not be meeting on the 11th. So we're going to revise that schedule so that in November, you will not be meeting on the 11th, which is Veterans Day, and the 25th, which is the night before Thanksgiving. Just so you know, though, the minute, 
the minutes show that we were going to meet on the 18th anyway. Yeah, they do. Oh, and then I could be wrong. I thought you guys didn't want to meet on the 18th. So, so then we're just clarifying we're not meeting on the 11th and we're not meeting on the 25th. Okay. Okay. Thank you. We're not meeting on the 25th of November. No. No. Of November. Oh, okay. But it's we the will night be before meeting, Thanksgiving. We'll be meeting on the 18th. Correct. Okay. So the only only change is 18th to the 11th for no Correct. reason. All right. Next up under other business, um, the opening of town hall. Da, da, da. Yes. So we did receive word on um, the board of selectmen, I think discussed it on Monday. Town hall will be opening on Tuesday, October 13th. For this group, there are going to be some changes. Um, you'll be able to access the building if you want to come into the building. Um, our office, our main office where your packets are kept, you won't be able to get into that main office. There is a half door, like a Dutch door, that is going to be locked. Um, and Amy can hand you your packets, or if you would prefer, and Amy would prefer, um, could the continued use of the drop box. The drop box seems to be working very well, and she is more than willing to put your packets in the drop box if you'd like. So um, just if you want to keep doing that, just give her a call, give me a call, and we'll put your stuff out back. If not, if you can't get a hold of one of us, um, you, you can't enter the building, and somebody will be around to give you your packets. But we really are strongly encouraging you to continue to use the Dropbox, as we are strongly encouraging the engineers to continue using that, that back Dropbox. Um, we kind of want to limit the number of people in the office. Um, our open office hours, the agents used to meet with in, uh, residents or um, anybody that had a question on um, Tuesdays at Tuesday from 8 to 11 or Friday from 10, no, I'm sorry, Friday from 1 to 4. Um, we are still going to have office hours, but they're actually going to be remote. And give me one second, and I'm going to share the screen with you guys. So now what it's going to look like is the website now says this. One second. Share. And you guys can all see, and you're looking at the website, correct? Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. So it says open office hours for questions with our agents or by remote access only. Um, obviously, if someone needs to make an appointment with us, we will, but we are not going to have any walk-in requests. IT, as awesome as they are, big shout out to IT, has developed this for us. So somebody can go in, register for office hours, they can do it that day, tell us what they want to talk about, and they can register. And what will happen is they will pop into a Zoom room, um, and Kevin and Alyssa will be waiting in there to answer their questions. There'll be like a little thing like you see when we're in our waiting room ready, um, if we sign in early, um, it'll be something like that. It'll be first come, first serve. Um, I thought this was a really great, um, neat thing that IT set up for us. Big shout out to Thomas. And um, we're hoping it works. So that's just kind of something new that's going on in our office. And I thought we'd share that with you. Um, so we're hoping that works out. And again, if somebody really does need to meet with us, we obviously will take appointments, but we're going to try to kind of steer everybody through to the remote. Most of our office hours, I'd say 75% of our office hours are the engineers coming in wanting to talk over a project before they present it to you. What are our feelings about it? So, and they've already expressed um, a desire to keep doing that through Zoom. We've met with many of the engineers before you even see their projects. We've done it through Zoom. Um, so it seems to be working out well. So just wanted to keep you guys informed and let you know that. Any Excellent. Um, one question. <clears throat> so I presume that, that our regular meetings will continue to be remote. Is that correct? 
Correct, Courtney. The opening town of town hall has nothing to do with the declaration of emergency, which governs the remote participation for regulatory hearings. So that's part of the part of the. This is the way I've explained it to me. The remote open meetings or public hearings is tied to um, an order by the governor. Okay, so we the um, so we're still going to have our hearings on Zoom for the foreseeable future. To kind of put it in perspective, Courtney, the Board of Selectmen's meeting room has a capacity of eight people. No, I you, don't, uh, you can't I mean, even I think fit into the Board of Selectmen's meeting room. It was more a question. I just wanted to verify that that was a process. Correct. Um, yep. I mean, clearly, there, as tonight showed, there are limitations on this, um, and and hopefully we can. Uh, improve our internet service. Sam and I, who's not, who's still in the audience, I guess, are trying to get a community network um, that's community run mm -hmm. and will be all fiber optic. And hopefully that will improve the reliability of these kinds of meetings because the uh, COVID crisis and so on, and these sorts of meetings have certainly underlined the shortcomings of our internet. Correct. So much Correct. for the ad. Nice plug for your fiber optic there, Courtney. Yeah. Well, I, <laughs> no. Jamie, you, gotta, you gotta admit though that, you know, even with everything that's going on, I mean the meetings overall have gone pretty smoothly. Um, you know, everybody's been able to participate and and I don't know, we haven't had I don't want to jinx it, but we haven't had that that many complications tonight was an exception but you know but also on that note if there's I anything think you, you would guys have think anyway. be, yeah. what i was um, just going to say we would have had those kinds of interruptions anyway mm -hmm. in a storm like this i have a comment jamie Good. and that is um and it's and it's just a shout out to jen and kevin and Alyssa and mark who through the years have worked with engineers and you know many of the plans we get are like the what we got tonight who's a completely new person to us but you know have already gone through a lot of things so it makes things much simpler once people know what the building envelopes are and what the limitations as to what they can do on a given lot. Um, I'll second. I'll second that. And I, you know, thirteen years on this commission, and Betsy and I have been at it probably, and Maury have been around for a long time and seen a lot of changes. And I can certainly say that the work that staff does is outstanding, and it makes our job a lot easier because we can come into these hearings. Uh, they've got. They've got the, the engineers trained. They come in with complete presentations for the most part. And um, and it makes it makes the process go a lot more smoothly. So thank you. Well, your agents are doing a great job. So big yes, thumbs up to Kevin and Alyssa. Just one more thing on the town hall, but thank you. Leadership words, guys. <laughs> thank you. Um, one more thing on, on if you are entering town hall, the basement's gonna be a one-way traffic. I forgot to mention this. So you'll be coming into the double doors in the closest to the conservation office. You have to exit by the health department, okay? So if you do feel the need to come into town hall to pick up your packets for whatever reason, and again, we are more than willing to keep putting them outside for you, um, you'll come in the double doors, come to our office, get the packets, and then you will not be able to exit through that. That's gonna be ha handicapped exit only. You'll have to go down past the health department and exit that way. That way you can expose more people. <laughs> yeah, well, it's it's to keep the traffic because most of the traffic in um, the lower level is to the building department. So they're trying to have them come in here, do whatever they have to do with their permit kiosk, um counter and then go down there and have to queue up six feet apart and they're just trying to keep people from crossing each other in the hallway so good luck with that 
We're trying, Jamie. It's, yeah, it's no. going to be a work in progress. So, you know, they're trying. They're trying. So, All right. Anybody again. else have anything else they want to throw into this mix? <laughs> I'll move to adjourn. I'll All second right. that. Patton. All right. We have a motion and a second to adjourn. If I can find the right line item. All right. <laughs> Betsy. Vlad Poulter, aye. Courtney. Bird, aye. Matthews, aye. Kevin. O'Brien, aye. Maury. Carlo Hawks, aye. Pat. Harris, aye. Peter. Walsh, aye. Steve. Pat and I. It is unanimous. We are adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Good night.